What is up heroes, this is Minade Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we had fun playing around in the laboratory, and in this episode, we're gonna see exactly what Dio is holding us up for. There's something... No, I guess there's a couple things I want to double-check. Well, one of them's not really significant, I guess, but it's important enough for you to want to clarify. Huh? First off, this machine. We didn't even end up using this thing, did we? Yeah. I was just wondering what it was. Well, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to answer that. Hmm. Look at the side here. There's a name or something. IG Replicator. Replicator makes it sound like it makes copies of stuff. Is the IG for, for Instagram? No, it's probably for immunoglobulin. So it's like a copy machine. Yeah. Probably copies. IG, whatever that is. Any ideas? Who knows? Ice cream by the gallon? <laughs> of course! This machine must be here so we can just make all the ice cream we want. <laughs> Are you nuts? You're one idiotic girl, you know that? In other words, an IG! <laughs> that was actually really funny. I, I, I appreciate that one, Sigma. Ooh, good one! Oi, oi. Hey, this isn't the time for stupid jokes. There's a helpless child back there in the infirmary who needs our help. He was right, of course. I hung my head in shame. Hmm. At any rate, as long as we don't know what IG means, we can't do anything with this machine, right? That's right. Makes sense. On to the second issue. Sigma, you found a journal and some sort of vial in the safe, right? Yeah. The vial. Could you show it to me again? Why? I didn't really get a good look at it before. You guys were in there so close I could barely see it. Was it really Accelivir? Yeah, definitely. As I spoke, I pulled the vial out of my pocket. See, it's written right there on the label. Accelivir. Granted, not everything written on the label is representative of what's inside, right? A very, I don't know, devious person could have replaced the contents. Hmm. <laughs> you really are an idiot. Huh? Although, I guess in this case, the G and IG stands for guy. What? I don't... The words were barely out of my mouth when he moved. Before I could blink, the vial disappeared from my hand. Hey, what gives? What are you doing? Dio slipped the vial quickly into his coat. Oh, don't worry. I'll keep it safe. I'll even give it back to you later. No, not later. Give it back now. I don't think so. If you want it back, you're going to have to listen to my request. Interesting. Of course, Dio is up to some, you know, devious plan. Request? Yeah, that's what I said. If you want this back, in the next AB game, you have to choose Ally. Ally? Wait, is that why you took the medicine to blackmail me? That's horrible. You're using course life as leverage. 
Well, I've got some really good reasons to do so. Yeah, we know he's like super plugged into this cult. I'll be happy to give it back if you just do what I say. I didn't realize until they started to hurt that I'd curled my hands into fists. If Dio would only give me an opening, if only you were on guard in the beginning. Uh, 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 I wouldn't try and take it back by force if I were you. You make any sudden moves and I'll smash it. He patted his pocket gently. Oh, and one more thing. Don't tell those other idiots that you found some Excelivir in here. Interesting. He's, he holds all the power in this situation, unless, of course, he can try to get K in a position such that K could restrain Dio quickly, you know, in a very, uh, in a way that Sigma could immediately alert that, well, Dio needs to be restrained and K was in a position to do so, or something like that. But otherwise, Dio really holds all the cards here. Hmm. And he doesn't want the others to know about all this coercion that's going on. It makes me skeptical about him even returning the Accelivir afterwards. So long as he holds the Accelivir, he can force Sigma to stay quiet about it, right? I hear one word about it, and the next thing you hear will be little bits of glass shattering on the floor. And now he's also pushing back, delaying Quark's treatment. Yikes. Darn it. That's not fair. This game isn't about compassion, and it's not about being clever. It's about one thing, how well you can manipulate people to your advantage, how unfair you can be. Admittedly, fair take. So what are you going to do? Ready to promise me you'll pick ally? I mean, we might as well. Fine. I promise. Sigma! I don't remember, how many points does Dio have? Does he have six? Oh, I knew you'd say it eventually. I'm glad you understand how this works. Does Dio have six points? If Dio has six, and we work under the assumption that Dio is going to leave everybody behind if he gets to nine points after this upcoming AB game, well, if Dio goes free and everybody dies... That's not a desirable outcome compared to, well, Quark dies from Radical Six and everybody else has a chance at survival, right? So, I don't remember how many points he has, but honestly, honestly, Sigma has a very valid case for just not even going with Dio at all, right? Sacrificing Quark for the sake of, for the potential of having more people alive. <laughs> But don't think about trying anything funny. Break your promise and, well, you know what happens. Jenna. See you chumps later. I'm really looking forward to the next round. Ooh, Dio. Quite the manipulator. With one last self-satisfied chuckle, Dio strutted out of the room. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Sigma. Are you really going to do what he says? Yeah. Sigma, you've only got one BP right now. If we choose ally and he chooses betray. I know. I'll drop to minus one and that means I'll get penalized. But that means... Look, it's not like I want to, alright? If we don't do as he says, then he'll destroy the medicine. If he does that, then Quark will... Quark will... So you're going to die to save his life? That's... Why would you do that? In all honesty, I was terrified. My choice was far from a foregone conclusion. Right, I mean, even though he promised Dio, it's not like... 
any promise, any words actually matter until he makes the decision in the AB room. The other thing is to consider that Clover has an impact too, right? Clover can also make the decision in the AB room. Clover can try to make it so that Sigma cannot participate in the AB game room decision. So, so things are far from settled, is all I guess I can say. Well, we should get back to the upper floor. Everybody else is probably finished already. I bet they're waiting for us. I didn't wait for Clover's response. Yeah, so I guess this move by Dio is also going to serve as a seat of division between Clover and Sigma. It's so funny to, to use Sigma. I've been playing Ninja Guy and Sigma recently, and so I've just been thinking of the word Sigma in a completely different context from, from DLR. It's gonna be so weird interacting with everybody else. Knowing that Dio's holding this over our heads. I wonder how things are gonna progress with Alice this time around. Only one way to find out. An Ambidex gate has been opened for 45 minutes remain until the polling closes. Sorry. I went ahead and cracked it open a bit early. Dio. In one of his hands was a moon key. He twirled it around like a veteran gambler, grinned and slid it back into his pocket. You don't mind, right? I figured you and Clover would get up here right away. Besides, I thought it'd be best to get this done soon before you lose your nerve. I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to the next round. Ugh. I glanced around the warehouse. Was anybody else back? Alice and Kay were back. As was Fi. And, of course, Clover. But no Temyoji? Where are Temyoji and the rest of them? They're in the infirmary. We carried Quark to one of the beds. Temyoji and Luna are looking after him. I see. How's he doing? Well, it's hard to say. He seems to be sleeping soundly, but beyond that, there's really no way to know. No change then, huh? Right. So what was your room, Sigma? A laboratory. Is that so? Did it look like the kind of place where they'd be researching viruses and DNA and those kinds of things? Yeah, it did. Was there any of that Excelivir? Yep, flashback to Dio telling us off. Telling us how we can't tell anybody else about the Excelivir. My eyes flicked to Dio for a moment. No, nothing. I wonder? Dio's obviously quite the manipulator he's no amateur when it comes to a game like this but i wonder just how observant he is right because we know fi is really a master class logician to an extent right she's able to do so much from so little and i wonder if sigma could accidentally or intentionally give a little bit in his body language that indicates some degree of hesitation some degree of restraint when he gives this answer and I guess that quick glimpse to Dio might be... might be that hint. Beside me, Clover bit her lip. I see. So, how'd it go with you? Find anything interesting? Fi only shook her head. 
With a unison of movement that almost looked choreographed, Alice and Kay shrugged. Nothing on their end. Hmm, where does that leave us? We've still got about 40 minutes left until voting ends. What are you gonna do? I'm a little curious about that lab you found. I thought I might go take a peek at it. I'll show you the way then. What's interesting is I wonder if Dio is gonna try to keep tabs on everybody. If Clover and Dio or Clover and Sigma go separate ways, Dio can't feasibly keep an eye on what all, both of them are saying at the same time. That would be wonderful. I think I'll go have a look at the room Alice, Kay, and Temyoji. Never know, maybe you missed something. I'm surprised he didn't go along with them. What room were Alice, Temyoji, and Kay in, though? Perhaps there's some Accelivir hidden somewhere in there. Ugh, what a baka. Then I shall take you there. What about you two? Where are you going? I'll... I'll... Hmm... Well, I think I'll start by heading over to the infirmary to see how Quark's doing. Then I will too. Buddying up. Glad that's settled. She nodded to Clover and they disappeared through the magenta door. D and K followed a few footsteps behind. Yeah, I'm really shocked Dio's not, you know, I guess like following at least one of them. Okay then. Guess we should be going too. Hold on. Show me that journal first. Uh, Dio told me about it. He wouldn't tell me anything about the lab except that you found a journal with his words. Some sort of stupid language. He said you had it, so I was hoping I could take a look. Oh, that's right, I guess Fi is good with Latin, right? She's the only other person who's really demonstrated some semblance of language uh, affinity. Yeah, one sec. I dug the journal out of my pocket and handed it to Fi. She began to flip through the pages, her eyes quickly scanning each one. This is Latin. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Latin? You mean you can read it? Yeah, with time and a dictionary. So in other words, no. But still, yes. Pardon me for not being able to translate a dead language on the fly. This looks like some kind of research log. I wonder why it was done in Latin. It's not going to be some sort of, I took the dog for a walk today. <laughs> it was nice, kind of stuff. I can understand a little bit, mostly conjunctions and things like that. I totally feel this. It's like when I watch something like Love Live, the anime itself, the vocab and stuff that's used is so, is a lot more simple. And I, I can genu genuinely just watch it without having to, to translate or have subtitles and stuff. But if I try to watch something like Steinsgate, it's a whole different uh, matter. But most of these words I've never even seen before. Fi started to leaf through the book again as she spoke. Then suddenly she stopped. Wait. I can read this one. Page. Page 216. How can you so quickly scan every single page? This isn't research notes. It looks like a personal entry. What's it say? Don't rush me. This is going to take a minute. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, I think I got it. Shocker. 
It looks like they're talking about Radical Six. What? Why are they talking about that? Not sure. I mean, presumably doing research, right? Let me read it to you. Keep in mind I'm paraphrasing. When the body is infected with Radical Six, the processing speed of the brain is reduced. If we assume the brain currently operates on a one-to-one -one basis with regards to time, Radical Six reduces this to one over the square root of one-sixth, or approximately one to point four zero eight. This means that for each second that passes outside, the patient feels that only 0.408 seconds have passed inside. Therefore, when one second when one second has passed inside, approximately 2.45 seconds, or the square root of six seconds, have passed outside. In other words, when 10 seconds pass in the real world, a patient infected with radical six would feel as if only four seconds had passed. This is why the virus has been termed radical six. That's actually really clever. I like that. Radical is another term for what is also known as the root operation, the function inverse of the taking of a power. In a less mathematical sense, it can also be used to refer to something that is extreme or severe. Those infected by Radical Six eventually develop a powerful urge to commit suicide. The exact cause of this is unclear, and although there is as of yet no direct link between suicidal urges and their reduction in mental processing speed, many believe that they are not unrelated. Those infected with Radical Six perceive the world to be moving at a fever pitch, as if it were a video cassette being fast forwarded. For instance, although the patient believes that only 10 seconds have passed, in fact 24.5 seconds have passed. Given this increased speed of input, maintaining the ability to observe and reason would become a Herculean task. One theory holds that the disparity in time perception causes the brain to be flooded with massive amounts of information. Unable to keep up, it begins to fail. Whatever the cause, the infected invariably attempt to take their own lives, which is arguably the most terrifying aspect of this virus. Research suggests that a targeted antiviral could kill or at least disable Radical Six, but we have yet we have been unable to develop one. It seems our best hope now is to harvest antibodies from someone with a natural immunity to the virus. There we go, and that's why the IG replicator was in that lab, is to copy the, the immunoglobulins, the antibodies, from somebody who is immune to the virus. The question is, who is that person, right? It certainly ain't Quark, and it certainly ain't Alice, but it's probably one of the people in the nonary game here. Thus far, however, we have been unable to locate a suitable subject. So I've continued my efforts to discover an alternative means of treatment. Given my current rate of progress, I predict that I will have a workable treatment within a decade or two. It is my fervent hope that humanity will be able to survive that long. The bodies of those dead from suicide are piled up along the roads leading into and out of town. Yikes. The entire area reeks with the stench of decay, and the sky is filled with the constant buzzing of flies. At times, their swarms are so thick that when one passes, when one passes, it feels as if a cloud has gone over the sun. Every day I see more crows, and rats are everywhere, feeding on the dead. Ironically, the only healthy-looking creatures are the stray cats, who have grown fat on a plentiful rodent diet. The few humans who survived the outbreak have been locked away by the government in underground shelters. Like we know that we're in right now, right? <laughs> we're in an underground shelter, and... Huh. Wait, but underground shelters, meaning th there are multiple shelters around, with presumably multiple sets of humans. I don't know how many were saved, but I fear only a handful. Their survival is the only hope that remains for the human race. Oh lord, please, let their future be a bright one. Interesting indeed. Whoa, that's a lot of information. Now we know what the virus does to you, though. If you get infected, your brain slows down by the root of one-sixth. That's, what, about 40%? That isn't the important part. Those infected by Radical Six eventually develop a powerful urge to commit suicide. Yeah, you're right. That would explain why Quark was, well, trying to kill himself.
There are two other things in here that worry me. First, the part about how they haven't managed to develop a treatment for it yet. What do you make of that? Well, it makes it feel like this uh, this journal was written some years ago because Excelivir exists as a treatment and Luna's aware of it, right? So, so this journal must have taken place before the time that Luna, I guess, became aware of Excelivir, right? Assuming Excelivir is that particular treatment. What am I supposed to make of it? Maybe they just hadn't found one when this journal was written? I mean, from what we know, there's a drug called Excelivir that cures it. Exactly. But in the journal, it says it might take 20 years to make something like that. Hold on a second. I'm getting confused. When was this thing even written? December 29th. No year. Well, there's no way it was written this year. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> anyway, moving on. The second concern I have is about the underground shelters it mentions. The newspaper article said something about quarantining people, too. After we read it, we all thought the same thing. What if this was one of those quarantine facilities? But this journal seems to suggest the opposite. The few humans who survived the outbreak have been locked away by the government in underground shelters. You're trying to say that this place might be one of those underground shelters? Which would mean we're all supposed to be uninfected. We would have been thrown in here to keep us safe. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to say for sure at this point, but it seems possible. But Quark's been infected, right? Then maybe the virus got in somehow. Interesting. Very interesting. The only thing I can think of at this time is... Well, who are two people from the outside world that were brought into this quarantine area? Well, okay, actually there are a few different possibilities. One is... The people that are in the quarantine facility now are not originally the people that were brought to the quarantine facility to say safe to stay safe from the virus because they were uninfected, right? Presumably these facilities exist so that people can be brought here once it's already been established they're not infected to keep those humans safe and well continue to be uninfected, right? It's very possible that our group for the Nonary game just isn't that set of people that for this facility, right? This facility could have existed and our party was brought here sometime after those original humans died or left or whatever it may be, right? So that's one possibility. The other possibility is somebody from the outside world who entered the facility in an unintended manner brought the virus with them. For all I know, Dio is what immediately stands out. The old lady we don't know 100%, but Dio definitely wasn't intended to be in here, but broke his way in. However, Dio himself is not infected. What can we potentially conclude from that is, maybe Dio was able to carry the virus without getting infected. Meaning, Dio might actually be the person who has the antibodies to the virus. Is that likely? I don't know how likely it is or not, but it is a possibility based on the limited information we have now. That would be... bad. Just think about it for a minute. If this is one of those shelters, a lot of things start to make sense. Maybe we've been here for a long time. Like, maybe they put us to sleep somehow. Made us sleep for years, maybe even decades. While we were sleeping, the pandemic that newspaper article talked about happened, 
And whoever had this journal made this entry. And then once the antiviral treatment was finished, they woke us up? Right. It's all just speculation, but... No, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it seems like a pretty plausible scenario, but... We were all captured before the pandemic started, right? Yeah, that is actually a really good point, Sigma. And how would they have put us to sleep for that long? How would they have known to do that? But most importantly, why the heck are we playing the Nonary game if the point of this place is to save us? Throwing a bunch of people into a game that might kill them is a pretty weird way to protect them from a pandemic. Yeah, you're right. See? We don't have enough information to make any real conclusions. I think we should see if we can find anything else. If I had barely finished speaking before she took off for the magenta door. Hey, weren't you coming to the infirmary with me? I changed my mind. You can tell me about Quark later. And with that... Yeah, can't blame her. I mean, if this journal was in that lab, I'm sure she's like, there could be a lot more that's useful in that lab, right? And who better to analyze it than Phi, right? <laughs> she was gone. Man. I let out a long, tired sigh and started off toward the infirmary. How's he doing? So now we're finally able to check in on Quark with Luna and Tenyoji. He seems to be stable, as far as I can tell. Still sleeping. I see. Mind if I have a look? Please, go ahead. I made my way around the partition, to the side of Quark's bed. The journal and the thing fine I had talked about would definitely need to be addressed, but for the moment the AB game was what I needed to concentrate on. Lives were at stake. Mine. And Quark's. Those infected by Radical Six eventually develop a powerful urge to commit suicide. Very scary thing to think about, for sure. If the journal was telling the truth, then as soon as the anesthetic wore off, Quark would go insane again. What if we weren't able to restrain him a second time? What if he managed to kill himself before we got to him? Or perhaps he'd just get out of the infirmary and go hide somewhere. Ding, ding, ding. On the other hand, it wasn't like we could keep anesthetizing him forever. There was only one way to save Quark, and that was with Excelivir. Unfortunately, Dio had stolen it. If we wanted to get it back, Clover and I would have to vote ally. But if I did, there was an excellent chance I would end up dead. The question was then, what to do? Sacrifice myself to save Quark? Or keep quiet about the danger he was in to save myself. It really depends on how many points Dio has, or at least that's what it depends on to me. It was so faint I almost didn't hear it. Grandpa. He shifted a little bit, then fell asleep again, then fell silent again. It was enough though. What on earth had I been thinking? How could I have even considered letting a child die in my place? Suddenly my cheeks felt hot with embarrassment and disgust. That I had considered letting Quark die, even for a minute, was pathetic. There was only one choice. There had only ever been one choice. No way was I going to leave Quark to die. My hands tightened into fists as I looked down at him. Any uncertainty I'd felt before was gone. I knew what I had to do. But are we going to do it? <laughs> 10 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. No vote is recorded, yada yada yada. Looks like it's almost time. You two should head back. What about you? Not going. I'm worried about Quark. Listen to this music too. It has me feeling so mixed inside, you know, like, 
simultaneously uplifting and hopeful, but also somber. But you're a solo. If you don't vote, I'll automatically ally. I know. I heard the voice on the intercom just like you. What are you going to do if Kay and Alice vote betray? Nothing, I suppose. Just means I lost that round. I'd just be voting ally anyway. You know who my opponents are, right? Alice only has one BP left. If I pick Betray and they chose Ella, I'd kill her. I'm not so desperate to escape that I'm going to kill someone for it. And even if I was, I can't leave Quark behind. You see, doesn't matter if I go into the AB room or not. My vote's the same either way. Tamyoji's mind was made up. Trying to persuade him to leave would have been pointless. And honestly, I agree with his reasoning for the most part. Alright. Take care of Quark. Of course. So proud looking. You worry about yourself. Let's go. Okay. Luna and I headed out of the infirmary, leaving Temyoji and Quark behind. Yeah, that music. I really like it. It's really, it's really peaceful, really serene, really beautiful. When we got to the warehouse, we found everyone else waiting for us. Well, not quite everyone. One other person was missing. I wonder who, our devious little friend Dio. Hey, where's Dio? Take a look at the doors. Of course. They're all closed. When we came in here before, the one on the far right was open. And that would mean that he went in, I guess. Exactly. That baka. He'd probably been worried I might try and take the Accelivir from him by force, so he'd hit him himself in the AV room. Actually pretty smart. What a coward. I had made up my mind to choose Ally, no matter what, but a part of me had still considered trying to jump Dio if he dropped his guard. Now he'd made sure I wouldn't get the chance to try. Where's Temyoji? Oh, um... Luna explained Temyoji's choice. I see. Well, I guess that means I don't have to worry about him picking Betray. Right. Will you guys be choosing them? Ally, of course. I, um... Because my BP is 6, I assume? Yeah, that's a good choice. I was gonna say, as nice as K can be, and as, well, as deceptive as K can be in some timelines, you really don't want anybody to be at 9 before you are. Yes. As long as Temyoji votes ally, I can't choose Betray. If I do, K's BP will go up to 9. But, but what if he forces you? I mean, then, then that's it. If Kay wants it to be Betray, then it'll be Betray. There's not really anything Alice can do to change that. <laughs> you needn't worry. I would never do something so crass. Really? Of course. Then you don't need to go in there. Ooh, Fi really pressing the issue. I love it. I, excuse me? Alice can vote by herself. Then we don't have anything to worry about, right? 
Well, um. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't agree to that. Really now? Why is that, Kay? Why not? I just can't. Shall we go, Alice? Hey, hold on a minute there. Kay continued briskly toward the AV room as if he simply hadn't heard Phi. Alice scrambled to follow him, perhaps concerned that he would lock her out. I don't like that at all. Only seconds later they disappeared into the third room from the left. I hope Alice is going to be okay. I hope so too. I know I mean I know she's had some training and could probably, you know, hold herself pretty well, but but this is Kay we're talking about. Kay's kind of, you know, the dominant force strength wise in this notary game. Well, there's nothing we can do now. Kay told the truth, she'll be fine. Not always given, though. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Time's almost up. Come on, Luna. Right. They headed off at a trot toward the second room from the right, and were soon out of sight, out of sight inside it. All right, Clover, time for us to go. Uh, okay. Right behind you. I sighed to myself and headed toward the leftmost AB room. Alright, we'll start our AB game. Clover gonna have anything to say before we, uh, before we vote? I wonder how much of a choice we'll actually have here. Ooh, the music just stops everything in silent, and Clover's like, What... what are you gonna do? I don't really have a choice, do I? There's only one thing I can do. I'm going to choose Ally. You can't! You'll die! Well, you never know. Just because Dio told us to Ally doesn't necessarily mean he's going to pick Betray. Do you really think a jerk like that is going to choose an ally if he doesn't have to? No, no way. He's got 6 BP right now. Oh, so he does have 6 BP. Yeah, we can't choose ally. We can't do it. I'm sorry, Quark. I'm sorry, Quark. But if I choose ally... Dio survives and everybody else dies. If I choose Betray, well, Quark dies and potentially everybody else could survive, right? If he picks Betray, then he'll have nine points. Well, what about you? Huh? You've got six BP too, right? If Dio chose Ally and we chose Betray, then you'd have 9 BP. What? No, that's not... I didn't even realize that until you brought it up. I'm just trying to tell you that Dio is going to pick Betray. That's who he is. And I'm trying to tell you that I've made up my mind. That's who I am. The only choice is Ally. It's the only chance we have to get that medicine back. <laughs> That's why Dio called you an IG. What makes you think he's going to give us the Accelivir even if you do what he says? Maybe you won't, but I can guarantee that he'll destroy it if I pick Betray. That's who he is. Fine. If you aren't going to listen to me, then I guess I don't have a choice. I'll be pushing that button. <gasps> We're about to have a showdown with Clover? In the AB room? Huh? Before I realized what was going on, Clover ducked past me and ran toward the voting machine. No! Stop! 
I snatched her by the arm and hauled backward with all my strength. Sorry. Guess that was a little too hard, huh? Hey! What do you think you're doing? You can't just throw a girl around like that. Well, you're the one who tried to trick me. But, but I... I... You're gonna die! Dio is going to kill you! You can't do this! I... I don't want you to die. Clover seems so much more attached to us in this timeline than other timelines. I wonder if there's something there that we don't know about. Ten seconds remain until Amidic's game polling closes. Thanks. It means a lot to hear you say that, Clover. I gave her my best reassuring nod, and turned to face the polling machine. Three, two, one... Betray. Betray! I can't do it! I can't do it! Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. I know we had all this build up. We had all of Sigma talking about who he is as a person, his character. But ultimately, if I were in this situation, I, I don't think I would pick Ally. And uh, this is one of the very few times where, where I feel like my first time around, I'm picking Betray, right? In an AB room. The first time I get to a branch point based on Ally versus Betray and and I feel inclined to betray. I don't feel good about it, but I don't think the other way, choosing ally, was the answer. But either way, we're going to see not just how Clover reacts, because she's certainly going to be surprised by her decision, but how Dio responds, how things go with Excelivir. I don't know. There, there's going to be a lot of chaos, a lot of frustration, a lot of tension, potentially violence. In response to this AB game decision, and so maybe that in and of itself warrants not picking Betray, but but I don't know, guys. What what do you think when you first got to this decision, or when you were thinking about it for the first time throughout the episode? Where where were your initial impressions lying? I'm curious to see if I'm the only one who would pick Betray in this situation, but. Anyways, of course, we're going to find all this out in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely some really neat story developments. I like the, I guess, the information that was presented in the journal. Um, kind of reestablished the, the storyline. And I like, I mean, the math nerd in me likes that Radical 6 is actually related to the math. You know, Radical 6. That's pretty neat. And we have a better understanding of how the virus works. So, so good stuff. But until next episode, when we learn even more... It's been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.